I'm Scott and welcome back to another edition of History in Your Own Backyard. And here we are in Covington, Kentucky at the famous Beringer Crawford Museum. And joining me is Lori Risch. And Lori, tell us a little bit about this museum that so many young children have visited for so long in Northern Kentucky. Well, first of all, Scott, thanks for being here. And I like that you're saying we're the famous museum. <laughs> so it's a great museum. It's um, been in existence since 1950. We have transformed ourselves in many ways throughout the years, but um, it's a great place for kids, for families, for everybody to come in and learn a little bit about their own history. We focus on Northern Kentucky history and we can take it from natural history to cultural history to art. So it's a broad spectrum of what you can come and learn when you walk in our doors. Okay, well tell us about some of the unique exhibits that you have here at the museum. Obviously the trains are the number one hit. You know, we have our big trolley when you walk in the door, it's the last streetcar that ran on the lines in Northern Kentucky. And then we have our Farragher model train uh, town that's there at the same level. And then during Christmas time, we have our holiday toy train. So we love trains. We love to be able to tell that story of how our area developed because of the, the railroads that came through Northern Kentucky as well. Another big favorite area is our Rivers Gallery. So it not only talks about boats and the steamboats and the transportation and the commerce on the river, but it also focuses in on what, how important that river was in our development. And especially we have a great display on the Civil War in the Northern Kentucky area because when the Confederates were heading this way, they were really trying to capture the Ohio River. So the rivers have always played an extremely important part, um, you know, from our whole settlement and development time period. And of course, it's a beautiful setting here. Tell us a little bit too, this isn't just the kind of museum you walk in and look at things. There's also many activities that go on here. So every month there's something going on. This, you know, there could be a wildflower hike or there could be um, Christmas, a pioneer Christmas, or there could be a Halloween hoopla. There can be all types of things that go on. But we have some really um, standard annual programs as well, including our music at BCM, which is a weekly concert series that happens in the summer. So there's 12 per year, and every week, we start one in April, one in May, and then from June through mid-August, there's a concert every Thursday night. So it's the place to be on Thursday nights in Covington, <laughs> is here at Behringer Crawford. Different bands, different genre of music, um, it's just a great fun time of, of uh, the community coming together and enjoying their musical heritage. We also have Fresh Art, which that is once a year, and that's when we team up with local artists. And the artists will come in the park, they create a piece of work in one day, and we're selling it that night. So we're there to be able to connect the artist with buyers in the community to start be able to make sure that they can sustain themselves, supporting the local artist. And then the other half of the proceeds benefits our educational programs. Now, of all the things there is to see in the museum, for you personally, what are some of your favorite things to see? My favorite things are the Harlan Hubbard paintings that we have. It's a collection we have all together, close to about 60 um, items that were painted, uh, or they're either woodcuts or watercolors or paintings by him. He and his wife traveled on a shanty boat for five years looking for a place to live. They um, ended up settling in a place called uh, Payne Hollow in Trimble, uh, Payne Hollow, Kentucky in mm -hmm. Trimble County and um, ended up living off the land. So while they were there, he authored books, they played music, they read a lot of books, and he painted. But he was painting being able to leave a glimpse of what our landscapes looked like um, you know, over 50, 75 you know, years ago and coming up to be close to 100 years. So um, fascinating artwork that he did. But we have other art collections as well with Mary Burr Sharon collection. We have our Wolfgang Ritchel collection. Um, just beautiful, beautiful things, but even more important are the fascinating stories that are behind the creators. Now, tell me a little bit about maybe some of the, the new features we can expect to see here at the Behringer Crawford Museum. With help from the Devu Good Project, mm -hmm. we built a nature play. So a little play area that's connected here on the grounds at the museum. But um, it is a play area, yes, but it's also a learning environment. So we were able to theme it from prehistory and early settlement 
So kids can go down and they can play in caves. They can play um, digging in gravel pits or digging in sand pits. They can go into pioneer cabins and they can go on a flat boat and pretend they're the settler coming down the river and um, pulling up to the shoreline and saying, I'm going to build my, my house here. Now, Laurie, I know there are some unique attractions here, and my wife told me about one in particular that she used to really get excited about when she visited as a little girl, and I think you know what I'm talking about. Tell me a little bit about that. I think you're probably talking about the two-headed calf. That's it. Yeah. And um, we, ha we have a great example of a two-headed calf. It was even in the Ripley's Believe It or Not booklets years ago. Sure. And um, But it is more, it's unusual for the fact that it was actually more of a Siamese twin. So it was two, two bodies that had co-joined that basically um, came out, only lived for a few hours. So it's not one body with two heads, but it's basically two bodies that just never separated. So that has been a favorite for as long as anybody can remember. So before it came here, it was in a tavern um, down the hill from us here because at the time period, not only were museums starting out as natural history museums, mm -hmm. but everybody was looking for ways to be able to bring people in their doors. Sure. And so it was similar to a sideshow of a circus. And so when it was at the tavern, they had it and they had, they had, they were called Lewis Street Zoo. And so they had the mounted animals and they had live animals. And so it was a way to get people to come in and patronize their tavern. So when the museum opened, so Mr. Crop, Mr. Berenger had also collected some unusual and oddities as well. So things like the shrunken head and the hairball from a cow's stomach. And so when these kind of oddities were here, um, the Lewis Street Zoo decided they're going to bring the two-headed calf up here. So that's how the calf got here, and the calf has been here ever since. Now it's not in the same exact state as it was when it was born a hundred years ago or more. So, but it's still here and it's still a favorite for everybody to come and see. Well, Laurie Risch, I want to thank you very much for talking with us this afternoon. It's been a tremendous experience hearing all about the Beringer Crawford Museum. And I want to thank you guys for watching once again. This has been Scott Borders saying so long to yet another edition of History in Your Own Backyard. And remember, travel, travel slowly, slowly and, and stop, stop often. often.